Hola chicos, hola chicas, eh, padres y madres y maestros y maestras del Colegio Nuestra Señora de la Paz. Eh, hoy tenemos a una gran persona y a un gran explorador, se llama Torgei Higraf. Eh, es un gran amigo noruego que ha participado en grandes expediciones. Él ha dirigido una expedición que cruzó el Pacífico en una balsa hasta las islas de la Polinesia. También ha estado en el Ártico y el año pasado participó, eh, me ayudó y además preparó la expedición que hicimos a Noruega con 15 jóvenes en verano. Y la verdad es que fue todo un éxito. Hi, Torgay, how are you? Hi, hi. Nice to be here. <laughs> nice. On Skype. <laughs> we have to talk on Skype these days. We can't uh, go outside. We have to be digital. Yeah. That's okay. Okay, well, eh, primero voy a empezar con la pregunta que hacemos siempre al principio. Y la pregunta es, eh, ¿cuál era el nombre de tu escuela y dónde estaba? I always start with a question. Uh, what was the name of your school and where was it located? I, I was in uh, Sureisa in uh, northern Norway. Yeah. Uh, about uh, 70 degrees north. Mm -hmm. And I grew up there. Yes. Uh, you when you are you are a shy student or move student or <laughs> how uh, yeah it's an interesting uh, question i was a, a introvert person yeah and uh, not very social yeah uh, very much alone and um, i had to use my creativity to find things to do uh, alone when yes. I... you live in this moment near to mountain, no? near the river. Yeah, we had the uh, rivers, uh, lakes, and uh, we also have the sea, uh, fjords, mountains. Uh, so nature was my best friend uh, <laughs> in my childhood. Yes. But uh, I also had the opportunity to go out and explore and be a kind of free young guy because my parents let me and uh, You know, nowadays, many young kids, they are growing up with computers and laptops and, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, iPads, uh, smartphones, and we didn't have that. So all we could do was to go out fishing or maybe to go out hiking yeah, and uh, try to find some fun in uh, the nature. So I was uh, uh, lucky, I think, to have that kind <laughs> of uh, childhood. In, in in your school, uh, what was your favorite subject in this? Uh, uh, geography, of course. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, sports, uh, gymnastics. Yeah. Uh, so I did several kind of sports like uh, volleyball and uh, soccer. And uh, uh, I also like uh, to go uh, rowing in boats. So I, I think I was uh, uh, a quite good skier as well. Yeah. Uh, and swimming, so we had uh, <laughs> we had lots of uh, uh, activities for, for for young kids in my my home home place or okay. little uh, uh, lake that we could go fishing every night. Uh, once I had so much fish in my boat that uh, it almost sank. You know, <laughs> it's like one of those stories when the, the uh, we took too much fish, so we had to go into the um, pound to, to sell the fish, yeah. but uh, the boat was taking in water and uh, we had to uh, throw out the water when we were driving the boat. And yeah, uh, yeah these kind of um, opportunities was, uh, uh, was the, the things that I still remember very well, like it was yesterday. Yes, yes. I think it's a, a good time for you. Yeah. Uh, has a teacher made your like or hate a subject? Uh, yeah. One subject or another, uh, natural science or mathematics. Uh, one uh, teacher made you like or hate? Yeah, I see. I see your question. Is you know, uh, in my uh, first uh, schools, we, we were moving around, so I didn't uh, quite fit uh, well into school. So I didn't like the teachers. Um, <laughs> But I had one history teacher uh, who made me interested in history. And um, 
I think uh, that this uh, interest is, uh, you know, it was a spark of me going to, to read, for instance, Thor Heyerdahl and uh, yeah. Fritz Nansen, Amundsen. So those kind of uh, subjects I got from one particular uh, teacher. Yes. So the teacher is a very important person in a youngster's life. Yes. But, uh, you know, me moving around from one school to another, I was all, always the troublemaker. Yeah. You know, the guy that uh, the teacher wanted to uh, uh, make uh, shut up. <laughs> like, zip it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, when you stay in, the, in at, ho at school, did you already know what you wanted to be an adult, as an adult? Um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I always wanted to be an adventurer. I always wanted yeah. to go out uh, <laughs> in uh, traveling uh, in, in boats or uh, skis or whatever. So I had that in interest since I was seven years old. Seven years old? Yeah, I made my first raft when I was uh, seven. <laughs> my God. Yeah. So I was doing, uh, uh, it was uh, like a dream. Yeah. When I was a kid, I dreamed being an explorer. And you are an explorer. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did uh, the things that uh, I dreamed of when I was a kid. And so I made my dreams come true. Yes, yes. I think so. In your, uh, how was your secondary education? Uh, how was uh, easy or difficult for you or different? Uh, it was... It was not difficult. I think school was boring because it was not uh, much challenging. Yeah. I didn't find uh, uh, the, the homework or schoolwork very uh, interesting or challenging. Maybe that was because I got bored. <laughs> And when you get bored, you get uh, yeah. Uh, a bad boy in the class. A bad boy in classroom. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, maybe I should have. Uh, Gone to a school where the, the tasks were a little bit more difficult, a little bit more uh, challenging. Maybe that would be better. Yeah. I, I remember hours of hours of very, very boring, uh, uh, stupid uh, tasks that uh, I didn't find any amusing at all. <laughs> uh, so, but I had a father and mother uh, who gave me lots of um, books to read and, you know, So I, I was lucky to grow up with parents who um, were able to teach me as well. Yes. When you stay in the high school, you think about your future, uh, uh, what your future going to be, to study in the university. What do you want to study in university? Uh, I wanted to go to uh, military first. Yes. I thought in the military, Uh, I would uh, fit very well in. <laughs> but uh, so I tried the military. But in the military, I found out that people are only saying, you know, move that, uh, go over there, bring some water. You're getting orders all the time. Uh, and uh, you are a free person. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't fit fit very well into the military <laughs> either. <laughs> so I quit and I went to. Um, uh, The Norwegian uh, uh, University of Sports and Science. Yeah. And, uh, and there I really uh, fit in. Yes. I find good friends and uh, good uh, motivation. I think uh, this is the, the best. University of Sport, I took uh, classes in history and social anthropology. And yeah. uh, I also liked that very much. I enjoyed it. You think that the, the university was. Uh, a big a, a best training for what you have been now no not at all <laughs> <laughs> no, normal. It, it was a good uh, playground for you know uh, learning how to use uh, books and uh, and science to um, uh, achieve something yeah uh, you have to you have to read something before you can uh, do it uh, uh, you know like like Matthew Jordan uh, says yeah Uh, but uh, the things that I learned from is uh, uh, 
have a goal and try to achieve this goal and have trouble and problems during the uh, the years and from that uh, I learned more than in university yeah. I think. Um, but ba basic training uh, you know I also, also studied journalism for two years and that was uh, a good place to be because you get uh, lots of contacts yeah yeah you, you are in a a place where you meet people every day and new people and you learn how to talk for instance that's interesting you have to learn how to behave in in groups yes be social <laughs> because uh, if you are a introvert and not a very social person uh, nobody wants to play with you <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, when you decide to dedicate to to education to teaching um, that was later uh, when I uh, I had to work uh, to get some money for the, the the traveling, so I took uh, jobs in school and um, mm. and then I found out that this was very interesting. I li I like to teach. Yeah. So uh, it just became some kind of a habit to teach. <laughs> so I go travel six months. I go back home and then I teach six months. I get enough money and <laughs> back into uh, South America or uh, Alaska or whatever. Yeah. So. Your life is as a teacher and as probably uh, similar than Indiana Jones, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> teacher and actually uh, in the 80s or beginning of uh, the 80s, uh, he was uh, one of my, you know, uh, heroes, <laughs> Hollywood heroes. Yeah, do you think that uh, do you think that being an explorer has helped you to be a better teacher for your student? Yeah, I think so because uh, you have to be curious. Yeah. And, um, creative. Creative. And those two things uh, I try to put into the heads of the, the students, or at least uh, motivate them to do uh, good in school. Yeah. So they can achieve whatever they want when they are, are growing up becoming yeah. uh, maybe uh, do what they want to do in life yeah I think it's, it's a good idea you have been on a small raft crossing the Pacific Ocean you were seven men for four months no four months yeah mm -hmm. uh, I think, what would you recommend it to the kids to be better in this day so complicated by the coronavirus? I think it's your experience for uh, RAF. I think uh, my experience is uh, patience. <laughs> I, I know how to stay in a small area for uh, a long time. Yeah. And um, uh, you have to find a room inside your head where you enjoy to be. <coughs> um, I could stay uh, for hours, just uh, think about uh, something, and and that will occupy me in in some way. Uh, you make a bubble, you know. Yeah. And you stay inside this bubble, and you just have to enjoy it. Um, yeah, for instance, if if you like to be outside during the night, you can you can watch the stars. Yeah. And um, I think even you can do that. Uh, maybe not because you have all these lights. Yeah. So you don't see the stars. <laughs> Depend. <laughs> but you can take the the smartphone, put it up to the sky, and try yeah. to learn uh, all the stars. The, co the constellation. Yeah. <laughs> that, that could be For something example. to do. You know. Yeah, <laughs> you have all the time. <laughs> it's true. So. It's true. Uh, uh, what a uh, what a adventure! Uh, I you think that what more influence for you in your life, uh, Torhejerda or Amundsen or what? yeah, I I have one. Uh, he he died uh, uh, as a young person. Yeah, uh, but from the the most Famous ones, I think, uh, Pretty of Nansen. Uh, Nansen, yes. Yes, because he, he was... He's my uh, favorite, too. He know. was, uh, you know, not only doing this sport kind of yeah. thing, 
going to uh, the North Pole, he was uh, a real scientist. Yeah. And uh, he achieved uh, things that were beyond all the others. Also helping people in uh, Russia. Yeah. He saved probably five million people during uh, the starvation. The Nansen passport, no? Yeah, the Nansen passport is also important. Yeah. So he was a complete uh, person. Yeah. He's a humanist, scientist, and explorer. Yes. He's a, a real person, yes, I think. He's a great influence for, a, a, a good influence and great influence for all the people, I think. Yeah, but, he was maybe not uh, the best uh, leader, you know. Yes. He had some problems uh, with his uh, crew and with his uh, uh, teammates. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but that Amundsen was not a good leader as well, so... I think maybe Tor Heydal was the best leader of the uh, Norwegian explorers. Yes. He was a great leader. Yeah. And what do you prefer, the cold of the Arctic or the heat of the jungle? Uh, The cold. The cold. You know, (laughs) if you are in the cold uh, environment, you can always uh, move around and get warm. But if you are in a warm place, that is like 40 degrees, uh, 50, I mean... That's terrible. Yeah, I yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. I prefer the cold too. <laughs> yeah, they do. The cold. Yeah. Well, uh, you remember this, I think. Eh? It's a, a big thing for us in Spain, for the group. Oh, yeah. Like, uh... <laughs> yeah the hats. <laughs> yeah. Ah, That's it's fun. there. I am. Uh... I remember the hat. Uh, uh, we really uh, had some uh, some fun in in that trip. Yeah, I also yeah. still have this. Uh, uh, ah, plastic, uh, the flag. flag. Yeah. The Ciudad Real flag. Yes. Yeah. It's very big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, it for your bed. <laughs> I will put it in my uh, my pole uh, flag pole. Yeah. And uh, and take a photo because it's I think it's best when it's in the wind. You know. Ah, perfect. Yeah. What is the best thing you remember from the the last expedition uh, we did the last year with the uh, fifteen young people? What do you do? You think yeah. that the best thing? The K- KLM Norve- Norvega. Yes. <laughs> yes. I like uh, very much uh, uh, the the big uh, mountain. We had to walk for uh, five six hours to get to the top. Um, some people went all the way to the top, remember? Yeah. And uh, a few guys went almost all the way to the top yeah. and so on. But I think that day was um, uh, very good because uh, everybody were doing their best and yeah. really, really uh, achieved um, their own personal goals. Yeah. But uh, I enjoyed, uh, 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 I think, all, all of the days were, were good um, um, I like the the fishing part in Nordal yeah. it's a good day yes yes it was a good day well uh, always I ask all the people who uh, I answer the, the question uh, I would like you to recommend two books one for kids and one for adults uh, that can you serve it as inspiration in this difficult day that we are uh, spending at home, you know? Mm. Yeah. Uh, for kids for and for adults? adults? I would recommend uh, Knut Hamsun. Uh, Knut Hamsun was a Norwegian writer who uh, uh, wrote about uh, strange uh, uh, persons, strange people, mm-hmm. who, and very psychological, you know? So the, the psychological themes of Hamsun would suit very well into the um, kind of stressful uh, situation that Corona is making us. Yeah. Uh, uh, for, for instance, Hunger, uh, a yeah. book uh, about uh, being very hungry in uh, Oslo a hundred years ago. Yeah. Um, uh, but for kids, uh, I, I'm not sure. You know, um, um, the 
problem is that uh, the kids don't read anymore. No. <laughs> I I try to read <laughs> in this time. Yeah. <laughs> They're only uh, doing uh, PlayStation and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the tablet. You know, if you, you you can't compete with the PlayStation, it's impossible. Yeah. No, uh, you, you can't give a, a boy 11 years old here this book is better than PlayStation. No, yeah. no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but it, no, no, I think that no better, but a change the activity in yeah. my house. My little boy, they are in the PlayStation now, but uh, he has one one hour only yeah. or two more or less, and then they do the activities or read a book. I think that is the moment to read. Uh, what? Uh, so if I, of, of course, when you are about 13, 14, you should read uh, Contiki by Tor Hedel. Ah, okay, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's not, uh, it's too complicated for, you know, uh, nine years old, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, that's all. I think yeah. it's so so easy, this, uh, this question. Thank you for all, Torge, it's a real pleasure for me, you know. You are a best friend in Norway, in, in Norway and around the world. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, I hope that you and your dear family are all well in this problem, in this problem of coronavirus. I think that is more different in Norway than in Spain. But I hope uh, you are well. Um, I hope that we see soon with us with a beer together. Yeah. Uh, preparing new expedition. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I hope I come to Spain someday and visit you. And uh, when the coronavirus is uh, is gone, yeah, we have uh, defeated the corona, then we can uh, meet again. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Manuel. Bye.